Hello guys, today I would like to start a new project, a spin-off of my complete water cooling guide, which is I did almost two years ago. Also video getting a little bit dated, I still getting a lot of feedback almost on a daily basis when people thank you me for making those videos and also making a variety of suggestions. One of the things that constantly get popped up in the comments is uh, talking about common mistakes that happens when people working on a water cooling build. It doesn't matter if you're new to water cooling or you do it for a while, there is always a room to make something stupid or just to make a mistake, it doesn't matter how you call it. It took me a while to figure out how to make this video because when I started making a list what can go wrong with water cooling build? The list became pretty long, pretty fast. So I realized that making one video and address everything in one shot is a little bit hard. Also for guys like myself with ADD who are losing interest after 10 minutes and stop even understand what people mumbling about after 20. I understood that I need to make a number of groups and, and talk about group individually. So, Today I would like to talk about common mistakes about radiators. I rounded up to 10 top mistakes and those either happen to me or to my customers. Let's start. The number one mistake and error with traditional copper radiators, as many of you already guessed, is a screw damage. The its source of it is idiotic design, but it's also complemented with an inability of people to read instructions. Basically what happened is the screw is exactly on the way of the water pipe. And when somebody using screws and it's longer than it should be and try to attach fan or attach radiator to your case, you go straight to the body of the radiator, punch a hole in it and it starts leaking. Few models on the market address this problem. For example, XSPC EX series of radiators, they managed to move flat pipes away from the screw pass so when you go with a long screw you damage fins but you don't penetrate the body of radiator and don't punch a hole it's no leak so it's minor damage but it's not as severe or coolants they just put a piece of metal just under the screw on a radiator fins part and uh, when you use a long screw you just get stopped by a piece of metal which you cannot penetrate that easily of course with enough determination you can do anything but it's not as easy as uh, any other model that has no protection whatsoever. And finally, a new crop of radiators like this, TFC, Admiral that hitting stores in about in a month in North America and already available in Europe. This totally different design. It's a steel tubes, which is aluminum fins that is um, welded together somehow. And good luck to penetrate this one. If you use the wrong screw, it will be almost impossible to make a hole in a steel pipe. The number two mistake with the traditional copper radiators is a similar to number one, but it's less severe. The fins that connected flat tubes inside of radiator is rather soft. So if you handle radiator not carefully with your hand and you can bend fins and make them flat. In this way, they stop passing air efficiently because they're basically blocking air pass and this is, doesn't look nicer either. So what you need to do to avoid this mistake is uh, you handle radiator only on its sides, try not to stick your fingers in the fins or screwdriver or any other component. Things like radiator grills help to protect so you wouldn't punch it accidentally. Any new model such as again an Admiral wouldn't suffer from this because the fins is a totally different material so you can um, handle them much more rough way and it's not an issue anymore. The mistake number three is a failure to check the size of radiator and size of your case. If you have a monstrous case like a case labs or XSPC cube case, this is my silent sniper build, the space is not an issue because you have a lot of room to work on. If you have a something smaller like this uh, medium tower and you decide in your wisdom that oh maybe I will buy this monster radiator that is super sick and super big and after that oh how I can put it in oh my god it doesn't it doesn't fit what do can I do right so be smart measures how much space you have 
how wide it is, how long it is, and how tall it is, and then you decide how, what kind of radiator you can put. For example, this one, it's not much room at all. Your couple options, my not very favorite option on the front, maybe, maybe possible to put dual radiator here with the cables on the way, can you show? Or probably the best case scenario, don't suffer too much and put the radiator outside on a bracket. Doesn't look good, but it's work good. Mistake number four is the failure to clean your copper radiator, which produces a far from clean room environment. Things can be found inside such as the shavings of metal, piece of solder, and of course the flux that used to produce your system. If you don't wash your radiator before use, all the junk will end up in your CPU block and your performance will be reduced. Mistake number five is related to optimal usage of your radiator to get the maximum possible performance out of it. I see a lot of people using radiator in front of the case when you have fans pushing air from outside and you push all your head air that you collected from your components back on your components very smart the best way to do it you either put a radiator doesn't matter where you put it but you blow hot air outside of your case obviously it's look pretty stupid when you do it in front so the good locations for your radiator is the top bottom when you blow up and down or even outside the front mounting that you can see in the hundreds and hundreds builds is not optimal Mistake number six, to use two different fans with totally different characteristics in push-pull position on the same spot on the radiator. Having said that, it's okay to use different fan pairs in different parts of the radiator, like this. Mistake number seven, to use slow fans on the radiator with high density of the fins, so a fan has no power to push it through. When you use slow fans, use radiator with a low restriction and low fin count. Mistake number eight, Freak out and panicking when seeing some natural oxidation inside of the copper radiator port. Mistake number nine, to count how much radiator power you need to effectively cool your computer. Very simple rule to follow, one hot component for one fan placement. For example, this triple radiator is okay for one CPU and two GPUs. If you have another GPU, you need a quad. If you have only CPU and GPU, dual will be okay. Don't count much about radiator width and especially about radiator thickness. The most performance gain, almost all performance gain, goes on the how long your radiator is, not how wide or how thick it is. And number 10, and my favorite mistake, is using dummy plugs provided with XFPC EX series as a stop plug in a live system. It doesn't have a threads on it. Put it in a garbage. Thank you for watching and see you with episode two.